So we have to consider some substitution reactions in just a little bit more detail than we did before, even with the initiation propagation termination series that we went through as well. We need to talk a little bit more about these substitution reactions and how they can occur. So um, let's make alcohol, shall we? Okay, now how we can do that and how that can be done is that you can take halogenated hydrocarbons and substitute the halogen for an OH group. And when that happens, you're substituting the thing that um, wants to be attracted, a negative end that wants to be attracted to a positive end. So now, here's what we call that, by the way. This chemical right here, and I, and I might have mentioned in another video that I might have mentioned it backwards, so stay with this definition right here. This chemical right here, we can actually take off and put on an OH to make this into an alcohol. And what we would be doing is substituting something called a nucleophile. A nucleophile is something that wants to be attracted to something called an electrophile. An electrophile is something that wants to take electrons or something that's negative. Well, here's how this operates. This is a leaving group in this chemical right here. And by the way, let, let, let's look at this and not get freaked out by what, what this formula might look like. This is one, two uh, carbons long in terms of your longest continuous chain. Um, or is it? No, nope. one, two, well, you can go one, two, three. <laughs> right. So that's going to be a propane molecule right there with a methyl on the second one. So it's a two methyl propane. But an iodine is also on the second propane. So it's going to be two methyl, two iodo propane. That's what this is. And what we want to do is we want to make an alcohol out of this by putting an OH group on and taking off the I. The I, here's what we're going to wait for. We're going to wait for the iodine in this reaction right here to abscond with those electrons that are in this bond and make this molecule a slight positive charge or an electrophile that wants to actually get now another negatively charged thing with electrons called a nucleophile. And so this is called nucleophilic substitution because this is what happens. And now we're going to start off with a mechanism that occurs for tertiary types of compounds. Remember tertiary, this iodine is located on a carbon that's attached to three other carbons, so this is tertiarily located. So what's going to happen is that the iodine is going to take off with the electrons, and that's step one. It's actually a step that's the slowest step in a two-step mechanism, so it's called the rate-determining step. And what happens is, we're going to wait for energy to be added to this molecule right here so this iodine can be taken off. Rather than taking an OH group and banging it in and making a collision here occur to substitute the OH and the I. And here's why that's really tricky. Because when you, here it comes, this right here is this, okay? So here is the iodine here, and here's your C that has three CH3s attached to it, okay? Here's an OH that says, hey, I would like to substitute myself onto that molecule by taking the I off. <laughs> Old Star Trek music is, works great for organic chemistry. <laughs> now look at, if this is gonna collide with this molecule, do you see that at any one time, this iodine is rather protected by a lot of garbage all the way around, that's hydrogen garbage, all the way around this molecule. And it might only be lucky if you actually get a collision occur that can remove that iodine and put on the OH and substitute it. So what generally happens in these reactions where you have a tertiarily located type of atom is that there's going to be energy added and then this what we call heterolytic uh, removal of the iodine here, and what happens is, no, it takes off with the electrons in that bond. So the iodine then takes off and forms an I negative somewhere, and now this molecule is ready to accept this OH onto itself in a two-step process. And so that is going to occur after that first step, take off with it. And by the way, I got to mention this too, so you, so you get it. Iodine is a really good leaving group, or uh, a really good nucleophile to take off. And why is that? It's because of the fact that the polarity difference, the electronegativity, the electronegativity difference between the carbon and the iodine is not that great. And that forms a bond that is not as strong. 
But if you actually put bromine there, the bond is stronger between carbon and bromine. So bromine isn't as good of a leaving group as iodine is. What's even worse is chlorine. Now, chlorine and bromine and iodine are, uh, iodine are still pretty good at being able to leave. But if you put an F there, a fluorine, you can't rip that sucker off because fluorine and carbon have such an electronegativity difference that there is a very strong inter inter uh, uh, atomic time of bond that occurs there, covalent bond, right? And that covalent bond is so strong that F is not a very good leaving group. Just thought I'd tell you. As you go down the, the group uh, 17 on the periodic table from, from fluorine to chlorine to bromine to iodine, what you're going to get is an increase in being able to leave, an increased ability to be able to leave with electrons. Okay, now, Leaves with the electrons, the OH here, an OH, a hydroxide group, which is a negative charge, actually then finds its way to attach onto that C in a two-step mechanism. So it's called, now I know that this is going to sound kind of funny, but this is really called an SN1 mechanism. So, F, sorry, SN1 mechanism. SN1 is a nucleophilic substitution. Substitution nucleophilic number one. But it's two steps, that's why you got to remember it. Number one, SN1, is two steps. It's SN1, it's actually, even though this one occurs in two steps and the other one occurs in one step that we're gonna, I'm going to show you, this one's faster, even though it has two steps. But the rate determining step is this chemical losing its iodine. That's the slowest step. So actually, if you were to write the rate law, and by the way, some of you are interested in chemical kinetics and you might be asked to write the rate law, rate equals K times the concentration of that chemical with the iodine on it. Okay, I'm going to just put the rest in there. That is the rate law for any type of SN1 mechanism. You just take that first original chemical and you write rate equals K times the concentration of that. Now, uh, there's another mechanism that is one step long and yeah, it's called SN2. Now, an SN2 mechanism is one step and it's where your leaving group is at the end of the molecule. So here's one, two, three, propane, and it's a bromopropane or a one bromopropane. And if you want to actually, now, you could put an OH on here and make it an alcohol like propanol or propanonol, but you can also have different types of nucleophiles other than OH. Well, you could have um, water is a nucleophile, it's not a great one, but it, uh, it's another one. CN negative, which is cyanide, that's a really good nucleophile. You know what constitutes a, a good nucleophile? Is when you have lone pair electrons that are ready to be attracted to something that has a, a, a positive charge to it, like an electrophile will, when it loses its leaving group. Now, uh, CN negative is really good, OH negative is great. Um, generally speaking, uh, chlorine and bromine and things like that, halogens don't really substitute well with halogens. You would never pick that for a reaction. Um, and um, uh, let's see, hydroxide, cyanide, yeah, those kinds of things. <laughs> those are good. Oh, and ammonia, NH3, because of the lone pair on the nitrogen. That's a really good one as well that, ca that acts as a nucleophile. Right. Okay, hey, now, um, in one step, because the bromine's at the end and it's not really sheltered and hidden by a lot of hydrogens if it's sticking out at the end, you can attack that right away in a quick mechanism. Well, I'm going to say quick because actually, like I said, SN1s are faster than SN2s. But the SN2 occurs in one step where a simultaneous collision of this molecule with this one will switch uh, partners and we'll put the CN on here and the BR will come off in an SN2 mechanism. And what we'll get is that, that nitrogen here, which is triple bonded to that carbon, then bonds onto this carbon here. The bromine goes off by itself, and we get this. Now, what would that be? Well, a triple bonded N at the end of a molecule, that's a nitrile, remember? So this one, one, two, three, four, that would be a butane with a nitrile attached, and that's called butane nitrile. Um, so, uh, an SN1 mechanism, one, uh, <laughs> an SN1 mechanism is two steps and an SN2 mechanism is one step. And by the way, the rate here is determined not only by the concentration of this chemical, by this one as well. And so if, again, you're writing a rate law for an SN2 mechanism, there's two things to consider in the rate law. It's the concentration of the chemical that you have originally here, and the concentration of that other chemical that you are bonding, the, the electrophile 
with the bromine attached and the leaving group attached and the nucleophile and that would be what we call the rate law for that one as well. So there are the two mechanisms SN1 and SN2.